I couldn't help but just to think in the book of Genesis, when, when, the, when you see the first few scriptures talked about how earth was just basically in a whole way of void, dark, destruction. But it did say the Spirit of the Lord was hovering. Well, why, did, why didn't he act on, um, you know, fixing that situation? Well, because the Holy Spirit always waits for the Word to, to, to get engaged and to oversee. And when God said, God was looking at darkness, but God said, let there be light. And the Holy Spirit that was hovering brought what God had said to pass. So thank God as we are faithfully saying what God says about our situation, we can know the Holy Spirit is behind the scene working on things right now. How many thank God you could be in church right now, but you thank God the Holy Spirit is working on things that we don't see, don't feel necessarily, but He is working nevertheless. We're on a, a series on faith, and I believe I'm going to change gears, but I wanted to give a little bit more information, uh, not just information, I believe for revelation, these words just pop off the page and apply to us and whatever we're facing. So let me pray that. Father, give us all the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, the eyes of our understanding being flooded with light where there is darkness, so we can know things that we need to do moving forward. And what is the glory of your inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. We have a few sort of foundational scriptures, and Hebrews eleven six 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible. It's not even possible. We're unable to please him. How many have ever been believing God for something and the doctor's report was totally contrary? How many have been believing God for things that just didn't, you didn't have the feeling? I mean, you know, you just, you didn't feel what you're believing God for. Or your emotions were all going haywire, huh? What do we do in a situation like that? We praise God. And we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. You know, you go to the different doctors. I, I mentioned this uh, first service. If, if you have something going on in your body physically and you're sick, you normally go to your general practitioner, correct? So that's fine. But how many thank God there's also Jehovah Rapha who is our healer. We want to make sure we keep him involved in what we're doing. But then also, how many know that sometimes if you have a broken down marriage, you need to go to, which is a doctor, to try to help uh, heal your marriage. And now, it seems to me that there's a lot of talk about uh, mental issues and mental pain and mental challenges. Well, why is there a stigma in that? Like your body can be uh, dealing with sickness. You go to your doctor and we're working on it and we're believing God for it. And then counseling is like a doctor for our, for our you know, for uh, marriages and whatever you might go to them for. But how about going to a doctor to help you mentally? There's so much good help out there, please. If, if you're saying, I just don't take medicine, I was that type of person. <laughs> but I realized God wanted to assist me in some things I was believing God for. So don't let that stigma keep you from getting the necessary help that you need. All right. I don't know why I said that, but it was for somebody. Now, Mark 11, no, 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 let's go back to Hebrews eleven six. 6. But without faith, it's impossible, not even possible, unable to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. God, I know you are because I'm here worshiping you because your word says so. And he is awesome. And also, he's also, he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So not only is God alive, he also wants to reward you for your faith uh, or he wants to bring the past, the word of God that you believe. Mark eleven twenty two 22 in the Amplified says, and Jesus replying to them said, have faith in the government constantly. Please. Now, I'm not opposed to government, not, not just, but how many know there are some people just totally relying on the government and that's not going to be good? We pray for the government. We pray for those that being authority. So I could just go over like this, you know, he said, Replied, said of them, have faith in your job, have, have faith in your mom, your dad, have faith. It's good to have faith in these things, but not as your source. You know, God is 
our source and everything else is a resource to help bring to pass what we believe for. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's really discussing the lifestyle of faith. Now, going back to Mark 11, you don't need to go there, but it says have faith in God constantly. We should always have a faith target we're working on because there's plenty of them. If not, I'm sure there's some for you, but for those around you. So the faith that pleases God can change things. A prayer of faith is how you receive from God what he's done for us in his promises and in the truth of what he's already done in the work of redemption. This is how we appropriate it. This is how we apply it to our lives. Mark 9, 23 says, if you can believe, man, if I, if I could just believe, if I could just believe, all things are possible to him that believes. How many have ever been in a situation that you see the word and you're like, man, if I could just believe that. If I could just believe, I know all things are possible to me. Well, guess what? It is possible for you because in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, God has measured out to you a portion of faith. The God kind of faith that allows you to believe him at his word. That allows you to believe what you heard. To receive it in your heart and to speak it out of your mouth and to act on the word that you've heard. Thank God. Say it with me, I am a believer. Not a doubter. All things are possible to me because I believe. Romans 10, 17 then goes on to say, so faith comes by hearing. That measure of faith can be increased by hearing and meditating on the word of God and acting on the word of God through experience. But it's up to us to hear the word. It's up to us to bring out that Bible and realize that God's word is God speaking to me. I want to look at these scriptures And I want to pay attention to these scriptures of things I'm going through right now. Make sure I have daily fresh faith about it. How many found out that when you believe you have received, when you prayed, the fight is on? But it says the good fight of faith because we win. I've never been in a fight that was good that you'd lose. Right? The good fight of faith that we keep everything aligned with what we believe we have received when we pray. So Tony Cook said it like this. He wrote a book on experiencing the elevated life. Some get in the vicious cycle of trying to have more faith. And as long as the focus is on one's own faith or lack thereof, the frustration will come. But the key to having strong faith is not just focusing on our faith but to focus on the very object of our faith, we focus on God himself. When we focus on the greatness of God and on his faithfulness and on his compassion and on his uh, uh, you know, hunger and ability to watch over his word to perform it, he's diligent, he rewards those who diligently seek him. Man, I want to say a thousand words at a time. God himself we focus on. When we focus on the greatness of God and we feed upon that word, our faith will grow. And help us receive whatever God has done for us. Now we're going to go to Mark eleven twenty four 24 again. And bring some concluding thoughts this morning. But you can hear the word of God. You can have faith for everything the word of God says. You can be built up in faith about it. But then you need to release your faith. And walk in the fruit of the spirit. Some of you thought you were going to shout. But then we got to talk about our fruit. We are fruit inspectors. We inspect our own fruit, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, help me out. Let's all read this together. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Keep it up there. Um, so if you, if you are dealing with sickness in your body, what do we do? We don't go to God yet until we find out what he's set upon, uh, set about whether he wants me healed or not. And the word over and over and over again tells us he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes were healed. The word says he sent his word and he healed us and delivered us from all of our destructions. Oh, praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful work to the children of men. How about Psalm where it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all 
his benefits, who forgives all of our iniquities, who's healed all of our diseases, who's redeemed our life from destruction, who's crowned us with love and kindness. Come on, is somebody's faith being built up now? What are you going to do with it? When that faith is built up, I'm trying to teach you guys in a sermon, in a praise and worship, when something's coming fresh and new to me while I'm praising God, I just enter in and hook up with what I'm believing God for, and I release my faith in that environment. God, thank you. Because I had a picture when we were worshiping today, God was on the throne. Jesus is at his right hand. The Holy Spirit's moving. I got such a, a, a critical picture, and I actually had that, you know, your imagination could be used for good things. I wasn't conjuring up things. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, oh, my, what's wrong with him? No, but by my eye of faith, there is a heaven. By my eye of faith, God the Father resides on that throne. By my eye of faith, according to the scriptures, Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, he was raised to sit at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. There's a real place called heaven. God the Father is there. God the Son is there. Now we're living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, and he's here to help us. Look at the scripture again, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It says, therefore I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, whatever things you ask for, whatever things you, whatever thing you ask for, help me fill in the blank when I pause, whatever things you ask for, what are we supposed to do when we pray? Believe that you do what? Receive them, and that word receive also means take now back up. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for, when? When you pray, believe that you receive them. When? You have to believe you got it before you get it. Oh, I, I, just, I just believe what I see. I'm just going to wait for it. You'll never see it. Because God operates on the principle that his word is forever settled his word is integrity. His word is truth. His word is truth about the matter. And I'm going to go with what God said on the matter. Let's get that word in our heart. Get it in our heart and we can go before God and say, God, your word says. You know, Isaiah tells us that God says, put me in remembrance of my word. He likes that. He likes that. I like to bring you know, certain in him confessions right before. But God, I thank you. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I thank you, God. You said that by Jesus' stripes I am healed. I'm just going to thank you for that right now from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I thank you that by Jesus' stripes I am healed. I thank you, God, that all my children are taught of the Lord. Great is the peace of my children and righteousness are all established. They're far from oppression and fear and terror and that shall not even come nigh our dwelling. And God, that's what we want to say, and I'm calling from the north, south, east, and west. In Jesus' name, give up. Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone called by the name of the Lord to be here at Harvest Church in our families and the body of Christ cometh. By the way, I'm calling everybody that belongs to Harvest to get back in church. Still, if you're uncomfortable, stay connected online. Something great is happening here. See, some of you for the first time, even this morning, my wife and I, being pastors, we love you so much. We miss you. Something happens in the assembly. Forsake not the assembly of yourself, as some have gotten into the habit, but all the more when you see the day approaching, the word says, assemble for encouragement. Assemble. You're in this environment today. I'm believing God. I'm leaning in. God, what are you saying to me? Any correction? What are you saying to me, God? Uh, anything I need to do as far as that? You might put some things on your heart. We've got to get down to the fruit of the Spirit in a second. You might be tight, but it's... <laughs> Thank you for that two words of encouragement over there. <laughs> you might have already... Anyway, okay. So, let me read it again. Therefore I say to you, what things you ask when you pray... Believe that you receive them when you pray. You take them by faith. You believe you receive it. God, I believe I've received healing for my body, my mind, my will, my emotions. I believe I receive 
And I thank you that I'm healed. I thank you that the healing power of God is working mightily in me now. We're going to cure the Holy Spirit. Is removing burdens and destroying yokes, and I'm getting better, and I'm getting better. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Now, Galatians, I have to get in metal with you a little bit here. Now, Galatians happens also in Galatians 5.22. says, now the fruit of the Spirit, or the fruit of the Holy Spirit that works in us, His presence within us accomplishes. Actually, this is, this is fruit that actually comes in our recreated spirit. And we have to develop in these areas. The first one's love. You might say, man, I got this faith thing. Now I have taken by faith what I believe I have received. How are you driving? How would you talk to your wife this morning? How would you talk to your husband? How would you talk? You know, Proverbs even says that people take care of their animals well. How are you doing with the love walk? How's that, how's that working for you? Faith works by love. First fruit, man, I'm telling you what. How about, how, how are you doing with, with joy? You know, if we truly have believed we received what the Word of God says in our heart, we know it's done. We, ha- we have it, and God's just watching over His Word to perform it. If you, if you believed you have received, wouldn't that affect your joy level? Don't make me teach about seven more episodes here. (laughs) Answered prayer is joyful. How about how about when you believe you have received, you enter into a realm of peace that passes all understanding. People don't even get you. Because they're wondering why does that person have peace in the middle of this terrible storm? Well, because I know the Prince of Peace. I know him. How about patience? I heard that groan out there. Patience. And then I heard a oh. Remember I said a few uh, services ago, faith like opens the door for God to bring to pass what we believe we have received when we prayed. But patience keeps it open, so he keeps working on it. Because there's going to be some times, you, you, you know, when, when you begin to almost start, you're getting thoughts of giving up and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's not a thought from God. The good fight of faith begins when you say, I believe I have received. Now the enemy's going to throw all kinds of contrary uh, words at you through thoughts. And I'll tell you exactly how it sounds. Once you believe you have received and you, you sort of got tuned in today, and once you leave, then the devil's going to say, you didn't get anything. That didn't rest that faith stuff don't work. God didn't want to heal you. Who are you? You messed up last night. Well, we already got it right, didn't we? We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you've got to cast down every imagination and wrong thought that comes at us. So how, how, about, uh, how about your kindness? You guys need to sit down and stop these standing ovations, please. How about goodness? How's your faithfulness? Oh, I said it Wednesday, and I'm just going to say it again. If you're chronically late, I actually didn't see who came in late today. But if you're chronically late, something's wrong. You know what I did last night? I ironed my shirt. So this morning, I was able to slow down and have my Batman cup and me a cup of coffee. Me before the Lord, just getting ready. Prepare. Yeah. Gentleness. Meekness. Humility. And here's the, here's, you know, here's sort of the bookend. Love is on one side. Self-control is on the other side. And self-control can get so strong, it can keep all the fruit intact across the board. Because when I want to say something I'm not supposed to say to somebody because they just got on my last nerve, and when I don't do that, I just sort of say, God, help me now. You know, you know, you can pray to God underneath your breath. 
and he'll help us. And God, help me, help me have self-control here. Please help me, God. I believe I received that. But sometimes you just have to walk away from the environment until you get your act together. There's a reason why some things aren't happening in some people's lives. They're mean. But I'm walking by faith. I believe I have received it. Woman, where's my breakfast? If I did that, she crowned me one time with a pan. Sorry. My wife's got Cherokee in her. If I ever said that woman, she, first of all, she'd go, I'm just kidding. I love to give my wife a rise. In love, you know, of course. Um, so faith is more than just a formula. Faith is more than just faith is, you know, in a person who's alive and who's real and who's been faithful. I dare one of you to tell me one thing he's ever done. Or one time he's ever failed you, I dare you. Mm -mm. He has never failed me. And when I trusted him and things turned out contrary, I trust God because he just doesn't have integrity. He is integrity. That's when the rubber meets the road, when things didn't sort of turn out the way you wanted it to, but you still love him. But you still praise him. But you still thank God for him. You still thank God he, he, he's only inside of you by the Holy Spirit. God the Father dwells in you by the person of the Holy Spirit. God the Son dwells in you by the person of the Holy Spirit. God, refill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And help us act out this faith that you've given me in the measure that I've developed so I can receive what I need in Jesus' name. Amen. You're not in this alone. You're not grinding it out. Amen. No wonder why the Word says, labor to enter into the rest. Think about what you're believing God for. You're resting about it. How about tomorrow? How about the next day? This is, we walk by faith. We live by faith. It's a lifestyle. Let me go to a quick example of some of the things we've been talking about as we conclude this in John 4, 46 through 53. This is Jesus. As Jesus was traveling through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a government official, a government official in nearby Capernaum, whose son was very sick. When he heard that Jesus had come to Judea and to Galilee, he went, based upon what he heard, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son. So look back here. How does faith come? Okay. So do you have a measure of the faith that God has? How do we know that? Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Throw it up there. Romans 12, 3. Romans, God has measured out a portion of faith to each one of you. You can believe what you need to believe in that situation. You can I can, you can. Through Christ, we can do all things. But anyway, we see there, when he heard, he heard something about Jesus that caused him to get up and go so he could beg Jesus to come and heal his son who was about to die. So Jesus, let me, let me read a statement by Max Lucado, uh, Lucado. Uh, the, the Bible is full of stories of people who've found themselves in frightening situations, but who chose to look up rather than look down, to look up in faith, and God got them through it. Here's the word working. He heard something that caused him to go to Jesus for healing. Jesus asked, will you never believe in me unless you see miracles, signs, and wonders? There's some people here or in other places or whatever that they're just believing God to do a miracle. What if he wants to heal you through a process? If the gifts of the Spirit, like uh, 
was it first or second service where the, the, the stirring up of the, of the uh, water, then, then the angel came and whoever got there first? There's only one person that could get in on that. Is, that. is that just or is that right? What does God think about that? He's given us his word that you can believe whether you get a miracle or not. And by the way, if you get a miracle, you need to learn these principles of faith so you can keep that miracle. So the official pleaded, Lord, please come. Come now. Come now before the, my little boy dies. So he wanted him to do what? He wanted him to come back to minister to his son, right? He had it in his mind. I'm going to go to Jesus. I'm going to ask Jesus to come. And he's going to come right with me. He's going to heal my son. But what did Jesus do? Jesus told him, go back home. Your son will live. There, this is a critical mass moment. But Jesus, I want you to come. I came so you can come back to my home. But Jesus was doing this healing in a different way than he thought. Come on now. How many remember those TV shows? Door number one. Door number two. Door number three. I don't know. What shows are that? Make a deal. Make a deal. Is that still on? Really? That's still on? Wow. How many know what that, uh, let's make a deal is? Raise your hand. It's all the old people. <laughs> Sorry. About that. Yeah. Forgive me. You have to. Walk in the fruit of the Spirit now. Oh, so my point there was God doesn't always come through door number one when you want him to come through door number one. He knows what door he needs to come through. It shall come to pass. Just probably not the way we wanted it, when we wanted it, how we wanted it. But who cares because when we pray, we believe we have received. I'm just going to thank God until I get it. I'll go to the doctor. I'll do what I need to do, you know, and, and thank God for good doctors, good counselors, good psychologists, good psychiatrists. There's a couple of you here today have sprained, sprained your soul, and you need help to go to that doctor. Like even a psychiatrist, they're, they're good people. Been through a lot of things, even PTSD. You know, sometimes God has a team to work with you, but I'm just going to believe God and not take your medicine, and everybody around you has to pay for that. How are you acting? Excuse me. Go get you some help. Jesus told them, go back, your son will live. Right? So when he heard of Jesus, it caused him to come to Jesus. He wanted him to come and help heal his son. He heard. Then Jesus spoke to him again. Go back, your son will live. Guess what else came right there? When Jesus says something, what comes? Faith. When Jesus spoke a word... That's tantamount to saying God spoke a word through Jesus because Jesus said, I only say what my father says, and I only do what I see my father first do. By the way, some of you need to stop acting out on faith that God told someone else to do that he didn't tell you to do that's going to work for them that doesn't work for you. And the man believed what Jesus said. And guess what he did? He just sat there believing in the sovereignty of God. I, I believe in the sovereignty of God. Don't get me wrong. But in some ways, it's misappropriated, misapplied. Jesus said, go back home. Your son will live. And the man believed those words, received those words. And it so affected him, he got up and he started back home. Because faith demands an action. demands an action. What does God say about it? While the man was on his way, some of his servants met him and the news that his son was alive and well. You know what he asked? He asked them when the boy began to get better or to change. And they replied, yesterday afternoon, about one o'clock, his fever, fever just suddenly disappeared. So guess what? Because the fever left, his body began to get better. 
That's why when we believe and receive for the you know, healing, and we thank God for the healing power of God to drive out whatever's trying to impact our mind or our body. Those symptoms and different things we have to deal with. So they begin. He began to recover. Then the father realized that that was the very time that Jesus had told his son, or told him that his son would live. There are some times we need to take God at his word no matter what we see, no matter what we feel, no matter what my, whoever's saying this or that, and even sometimes family tries to, you know, tell you everything you need to do, and, and then your best friends all, wait a minute. Thank God for friends that are wise and different things like that. But what are you going to believe? Dad Hagen said, people must act like the scriptures are true. If they don't act like the word is true, they're walking by their senses. And they're telling them, uh, senses are telling them not what the Bible says. It's trying to throw them off. So they're missing it in the faith realm entirely, which is based on what the word says, not on what you feel. First of all, he heard this gentleman's son got healed, but he heard that Jesus came nearby. What he heard caused him to go. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were harassed and oppressed by the power of God, freedom from the oppression from the devil, for God was with him. Number three, that he begged. Did I give you number two? Yeah. You just listen. So he heard, he believed, he acted, he begged or asked, come heal. Come heal my son. I believe you're a healer, Jesus. Then Jesus just spoke the word. Joe spoke the word of God over, the, over his son. Go back home. Your son will live. Psalm 107 says, some are fools because of the way of their transgressions and they are afflicted because of their iniquities. If you're sick, doesn't mean you did something bad. We live in a fallen world, so some, you know, that's why I want to tell you something. It is good to serve God on a daily basis. It is good to know the angels of God camp around about us. It is good to know that God is a quickening spirit, and he quickens our spirit, and he quickens our body. And they loathe every kind of food. You know, when you lose your appetite, something going on, and they draw near to the gates of death, then they are so desperate, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivers them out of their distresses. But how do he do it? He sends forth his word and heals them. Go back home. Your son will live. That's a word of God for that situation to cause it to turn around and change. But I wish I could get a word from God. Um, I got a whole book of word of God for you. Remember, remember, um, Revelation 19, 11 through 16 says, I saw heaven standing open. There was a white horse and its rider, his name was Faithful and True. With integrity he judges and, war, and wages war. His eyes are flames of fire. On his head are many crowns. He has a name which is on them, but only he knows what it is. He wears clothes dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Jesus' name is the Word of God. Jesus' name is the Word of God. Praise God for the Word that is written. Praise God for the Word that's quickened about our situation. But if I don't have a quickened Word that came alive to me, I'm going to go find out what God says about that. That's what God says. I'm going to get that in my heart. And like in Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to say what God says because the word of God says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea, shall not doubt nor sorrow, but shall believe the things that they say shall come to pass. He's going to have whatever he says it. God can't move some of our mountains because he can't get some of our mouths moving. I don't get all that stuff. I don't get it either. That's just the way God says it. Man, if I had to wait to understand everything God wanted me to do, geez, no wonder why he says you got to come to him like a child. Whenever I gave my kids or my, uh, mom and I, 
Um, my wife and I gave uh, a promise something to our kids. They weren't up all night saying, oh, I wonder if mom and dad's going to do that. I wonder if mom's going to do that. No, they put you in remembrance of that word. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for his word today. The man heard what Jesus at, what, what heard what Jesus said. He believed the word. He acted on the word. And then his son began to get well. Thank God for the word today. Two words I gave from last week that I'll conclude on. And again, these quotes are by someone else, not me. Reinhard Bonnke said, the word of God in our mouths is just as powerful as the word of God in God's mouth. Don't turn me off there. Because what is the word of God? It's God's word. When you get that in your heart, you speak that out of your mouth, God says, I will watch over my word to perform it. Isaiah 55 says, for as the snow and rain come down from heaven and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void without producing any effect or useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it will prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hebrews 10, 23 says, For God who promised is reliable. He's sure. He's faithful to his word. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, we also especially thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God from the Word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it as it truly is, the Word of God, not just the Word of mere men. The Word of God, which is effectually at work in who? Not everybody. In those who believe exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere, adhere to it and trust in it. God is good. Father, we thank you. Let's pray. We thank you for your word today. As we just pause, Holy Spirit, thank you for shedding light on what I needed today. Thank you for helping us be fine-tuned and maybe something needed to change or adjust so what I'm believing can come to pass. I believe I have received it. Now, God, if there's anything I need to do, fine. Otherwise, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you, God. Faith that pleases God. We'll continue to pray right now. If you're here today and you don't know, God forbid, you don't know. If you would go to heaven, if you're here to die, here's, here's good news for you. God said in his word that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? All of us have missed it. And the wages of that sin is death. Someone had to come and pay my death penalty because I was dead in my sins. And that's why Jesus, who knew no sin, he was made to be sin for us so that we could become right with God again. So Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus died for our sin. Jesus died and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Jesus is alive. He's the Savior of the world. Is he yours? There we head bowed, I out close. Just, just, just pay attention right now with between you and God. If you're here today, I'm going to pray a salvation prayer, a prayer of salvation. And um, uh, you're just going to sit right where you are right now. But if, you're, if you want to be included in this prayer, say, Pastor Coyne, include me in this prayer of salvation. I want to know for sure, first of all. I'm not quite sure. But... It, but I also for sure want to if I, I know I need him as my Savior. Would you just lift up your hand right now? Let me know who's going to pray with me and who needs to be included in this prayer. Just lift up your hand while, just right now. Thank you. Just lift up your hand so I can see it and you just put it down. Private moment. Pray this prayer out loud with me, everybody. Say it with me. God, come on, everybody. Say, God, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for all of my sin. I believe on the third day, you raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, I believe you're alive. And right now, I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord, 
Thank you for saving me. I renounce my past. It's a new day. I'm moving forward. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you stand, please?